Lilia being released into the game is an indirect nerf to Nico. If Nico uses her passive to transform into Lilia, she turns in the same champion. Oh dear. Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. Today we'll be discussing the recent champion reveal of Lilia, the bashful bloom. Lilia is the new dream-centric jungler we've all been waiting for. Now, we just have to hope Riot hasn't actually made it a nightmare. Before we get into it though, our question of the day is, if Lilia wore pants, how would she wear them? What would it look like? Option one or option two? Please tell us in the comments below or click the link below and hop into our Discord to talk about it with the rest of the Pro Guides community. Now, without further delay, let's get started. So, first and foremost, what is Lilia? For those of you who haven't seen any of the teaser or released material yet, Lilia is a fawn champion, half deer, half human. She looks like Nico got a little too curious with the local wildlife. Contrary to what the Deviant Art users would have you believe, though, she isn't the result of Hecarim and Nico having a forbidden relationship. Lilia was born in the Garden of Forgetting, home to a very special tree called the Dreaming Tree, where the dreams of Runeterra's creatures manifest into buds that bloom. Fun fact, Ivern helped nurture the Dream Tree, and Lilia was born from the Dream Tree's own dream bud. So, Ivern is basically Lilia's eccentric uncle, or maybe grandfather type thing, depending on how you look at it, I guess. I don't know, man. I just play Kane and press Q. I don't have the brain cells to figure this stuff out. Anyway, Lily was born from the Dream Tree's own dream, and she'd always dreamt of meeting humans since she grew up around their dreams on the tree. Her first encounter with them, however, wasn't the best, and it served as a rude awakening for how rough of a situation humanity is actually in. The silver lining for Lilia was that the dream tree had been dying, and when the humans accidentally cut a branch off the tree, Lilia put them to sleep, and their dreams helped restore the dream tree. With a newfound solution to the dream tree's lifeline, Lilia picked up the fallen branch that had previously held her own dream and has now set out on a quest to gather dreams for the dream tree. Lilia wasn't always set to be the queen of dreams, though. A while back, there were rumors circulating about a jungler who would change forms every so often depending on how the game was going. And it turns out, this was Lilia's original character concept. She was going to be a fawn, but rather than the dreams themselves being the center of her gameplay concept, she was a shapeshifter that would change forms between a bruiser form, her dream form, and an assassin form, her nightmare form, every five minutes, no matter what. No raid bar like Gnar, no permanent choice like Kane, just a forever rotating champion alternating back and forth. In theory, it's a pretty cool concept, but in practice, the playtesters hated it. Like, they were aggressively against it. It was just unfun to deal with as a whole, and it seems like it wasn't very fun to play as either. Riot didn't really cover this information in the dev post about her, but I think what I'm most curious about is how that version of Lilia built. Like, imagine having to be a bruiser for five minutes when you'd build nothing but lethality or AP or whatever her ratios were based on. Seems kind of weird though. Regardless though, that concept got scrapped, but they still liked the whole dreams and nightmare theme. So instead, they recreated and reimagined her kit from the ground up to build her as the queen of dreams, the most sleep-centered champion yet. You know, now that there's a grand total of two of them, but how does a dream-based champion get realized within the context of League of Legends? What kind of abilities do they have? Wasn't Zoe's sleep traumatic enough? Why do we need more sleep-inducing abilities? Does Riot hate us? Possibly, but the execution of Lilia's kit actually seems kinda neat, even if it is mildly terrifying. Lilia's passive is Dream Laden Bow, which means that when she hits enemies with her abilities, she applies Dream Dust. Dream Dust marks enemy champions and deals a portion of their maximum health to them over time, enabling her to take quick exchanges before flitting back out of a fight. Other funner fact, during the original rendition of this ability, it was so overtuned that playtesters force spawned Baron at level one just to show that Lilia could solo Baron at level one. The max health damage wasn't capped against monsters, so Lilia was Baron's natural enemy. They've since fixed the balancing, according to Riot, but knowing them, that probably means just having Liliana wait until level two to solo Baron now. The rest of Lilia's abilities are actually pretty straightforward for a recent champion. No 12 dashes, no fun and exciting new true health mechanic, just a nice intuitive kit. 
Her Q does do true damage, yes, but hey, it could always be worse. When Lilia uses her Q, she swings her stick around in a circle, striking any nearby champions and applying Dream Dust. Enemies at the outer edge of the circle take true damage, but as long as the attack lands at all, Lilia gains movement speed. Lilia's W involves her smacking the ground with her branch, dealing magic damage in a circle around the impact zone. Enemies in the center of the zone take extra damage, so there's definitely a reward for precision. Lilia's third ability, her E, is perhaps the most interesting part of her kit, as it lets her throw a rolling seed that just travels as far as it can until it collides with an enemy or with terrain. When it hits an enemy, it slows them by a good bit and does a small chunk of magic damage. Technically, this is a basic ability that is global, as it'll just keep on rolling until it collides with something. But the trick for future Lilia players will be to find the best angles to throw the seed from to avoid hitting walls or anything else that might detonate it before it reaches its target. The most obvious choice for Lilia players will be to fire it from the river into their lanes. But I can't wait to see what other kinds of creative uses get thought up as time passes. Finally, Lilia's ultimate lets her cast a lullaby on any nearby enemies affected by her dream dust. The bud mark over their heads will begin to blossom, their movement speed will be slowed, and eventually they'll fall asleep. As with Zoe's E, sleeping targets will take a chunk of bonus magic damage when they're hit by something, and then promptly wake up. Assuming they're alive anyway. I'd hate to mention Zoe's E and not mention the probability of death. Now, how does all this work in conjunction? Well, Riot has stated that they want Lilia to be a timid jungler in the early game. So it's safe to say that she'll be more of a scaling threat than an early game one. Additionally, with all her AoE abilities, it's safe to say she'll be starting Talisman and opting for the traditional four camp clear from buff to raptor slash wolves to wolves slash raptors to buff. This does lend itself to being invaded in the jungle like Riot was hoping for. It seems like if she can make through her first few clears in one piece though, she'll be a team fighting monster. Her E will be great for ganks, not because it's an amazingly strong CC in and of itself, but because it's global, which means she'll be able to help make things happen in lanes without having to come all the way into the lane herself. To some degree, she can even use this ability to psych out her enemies by throwing super long range seeds where she knows she'll miss and immediately channeling her recall. That way the enemy calls out she's in a certain location when in reality, she's on her way somewhere new. Or maybe just throw one bot lane from the fountain so they think you're attempting a lane gank, then start pathing top. Stuff like that. The rest of the kit is what's really enticing though. As a player who loves team fighting champions, getting a new team fighting based jungler that isn't whispering disturbing things in my ear <coughs> is really exciting. It seems like most jungle champs are more geared towards skirmishing and getting picks. So this is a refreshing change of pace. With her big AOE Q comboed with her W, she's gonna be more than capable of laying down the hurt on plenty of enemies at once. And if she gets to put them all asleep afterwards with her ultimate, I imagine that's a free team fight in and of itself. All things considered, it seems like she's gonna be a great utility pick for any composition that's lacking in the team fight and CC departments. We've only seen a little bit of Lilia, but from what we have so far, she's shaping up to be an exciting addition to the roster. And it's cool to finally have the payoff all these months later after the very first comment of a new champion to fawn over in the 2020 roadmap. It's also nice to have a cute champion that, you know, isn't unhinged. Good stuff, Riot, for now, until it's released and I have to ban it for the next few months. But for now, from a safe distance, good stuff. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed this video and please remember to drop your answer for today's question in the comments below or hop into our Discord to come talk to the rest of the Pro Guides community. We really do love interacting with you guys. Good luck on the Rift. See you next time. Stay safe and wash your hands.